Okay, Tom, did you want to make a start? Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Councillor Tom Davis, the Cabinet Member for Adult Services and Council House Building. And I'm delighted to be chairing this session this evening as part of the Council's two week long climate and biodiversity festival. Um, there are still a number of events to come and to take part in. So do have a look at the programme. And if you have missed any of the other online events that we've had that you'd like to revisit, they're all available on the Council's YouTube uh, channel. Just so you're all aware, we're recording this evening's session to make it available for those who can't be here live. Um, it will hopefully come as no surprise to any of you watching tonight that we as a council have declared a climate, and emer climate emergency and have pledged to provide the leadership to our community to achieve a zero carbon position by a net zero carbon position by 2030. We know from our research about where our district wide carbon emissions come from that there are three main sources transport, commercial buildings, and homes. Indeed, in Baines, 40% of our carbon emissions are from our homes. And this is from the electricity, gas, and oil that we use. And so driving down the emissions associated with the homes, whether you live in them as a homeowner, you rent them, or indeed you're a landlord, is going to mean retrofitting making our houses more energy efficient across all areas of our housing stock. Our belief as a council is that the role we need to play within our community is to assist our residents in, first of all, understanding what, uh, providing you with information about what you can do to play your role in this retrofitting, what options are available to help you pay for it, and then also to source those professionals who can help you implement this work. Also, of course, is the wider question of, these, of the source of the energy that you will still use to um, power and heat your houses. And so tonight, what we've got is a, is a panel of people from the council and from third sector organizations who are able to help us uh, tackle those um, four areas. And I'm going to introduce them and then let them speak for a short while. So first up, we've got Chris Mordant, who's the Housing Standards and Improvements Manager within Bath and North East Somerset Council. And he leads the council's Energy at Home team. Chris, are you going to wave? Hi, Tom. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Tom. There's Chris. And we've got Chris's colleague, Tom Hugo, who's a technical assistant in the Housing Standards and Improvements team and is here tonight to talk to us specifically about green energy tariffs. Tom, are you going to give us a wave? Hi, Tom, and hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, also joining us tonight is Ian Preston from Future Proof. Uh, Future Proof is a project run by the Centre for Sustainable Energy. Hello, Ian. Ian is just back from his honeymoon and this morning was on Radio 5 Live at 5.20, so he's had a long day. And finally, we've got Emma Lower. Emma is the Chief Executive of Lendology, and Lendology provide homeowners access to financial support to help them with the cost of some of these energy efficiency measures that we're going to be talking about. Emma. Hi, so Tom. Emma. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Hi, Emma. Thank you all. Right. So each of the four, Chris, Tom, Ian and Emma, are going to have eight minutes now to talk about their particular area of work. And then we're going to open it up um, to questions. So as we're going along, please feel free to pop your questions into the Q&A box that you should all be able to see. Um, but please don't take any offense. We'll come to the questions at the end once everyone's had a chance to have their eight minutes. Um, right, so I'm gonna start my stopwatch and then point to Chris. You're gonna go first. Are you ready, Chris? Yeah, just uh, get my screen sorted out. You share your screen while I find so, my yeah. stopwatch. Okay, that's great. So um, oh, I've got to go through this again. Okay, so hi, everyone. I hope you can see that. So, um, yeah, thanks, Tom, um, everyone. So like Tom said, um, 
you know the what we want to do at the council is try to um help those that live in Baines um make um energy performance improvements to their homes um to reduce carbon emissions but also we want to our residents and people living in Baines to be warm in their homes in well ventilated homes um and uh, at an affordable cost and so um you know the good thing about doing these works and if you've got a good performance house already is that it, it, you should be able to do both you should be able to have a warm home save money at an affordable cost and reduce carbon emissions and so what we've tried to do in energy at home is provide here a single point of contact for um for for residents and, and other people in Baines with homes in Baines to try to um give you some information or signposting to get to the next point in uh, in in improving the perform energy performance of, of, of those homes um so um what we've got here is 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 the energy at home website so all of energy at home you know we're trying to continuously improve it and and we'll develop it over the next months and years but this is where we are at the moment so our site here is is our website and um you can see the web address there just energyathome.org.uk and we try and update this regularly with different things that are going on um there's also a, a phone number and um an email address um and and with those with the phone number and email address you can basically get the same information from somebody in the team um that's on the website um so you know we 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 don't we we don't give any particularly specialist advice we have to signpost for that but we try to cover the basics and the stuff that the council um knows about and is doing already so um we've got a offer here here at the moment which you're probably aware of um you might be aware of which is a solar together offer which is solar pv group by scheme so please have a look at the website and look on that if you're interested in in buying pv um but the way we structure this website and the way we try to give the, any help or advice through the phone or by email is we've got a section here on energy saving measures so basically the idea with this is, is just to try to give some essential information on what you can do to um improve the in insulation of your home to to get pv or, or generate electricity in your home with solar pv on your roof or whatever but also low carbon heating systems like um air source heat pumps um so so that that that's that bit there the next section is is to do with planning um and so not some some properties but not all in Baines, might need um, planning permission so most of properties won't need planning permission for a lot of those measures but if you are in a conservation area or you've in a listed building then you then you will need to get in touch with planning and and the links here on this section to our guide help you help you find out what you can and can't do and also a lot more detailed information about various measures that can be carried out so this this is guide is 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 under is under revision at the moment the, the new guide is is out for consultation and you can find details about that on the council's website and the plan for the future is to link our our um section on measures with the um with the new document from planning which goes into the measures in a bit more detail with information about what you can and can't do and where so that's that's that bit there and then um so the next bit is is the bit that is quite um people generally find interesting and, and want to know about is what grants and support there might be available so this page is we list grant schemes that we've got going and and some other assistance that that might be helpful plus um our council um partner lendology who who provides low-cost loans and who's on again in a minute and uh so at the moment um our main offer here is as you can see there is a west of england local authority delivery scheme that's coming through from city energy and you can click on that for a link to their application form but if you want to know more about it 
you, there's another link there, or you can phone us up or email us, and we'll let you know about that. But we, we whatever schemes on, we'll we'll put on there, and they change. You know, we, we're hoping to have a new one next year, um, with a, which is slightly different from this. The most of our grant schemes, I must say, are all about um, affordable warmth. They're mainly for you know lower income people, um, households. Um, with a lower EPC, which is usually D, EPC, D, E, F, or G. So that's where the grants are at the moment. But the loans are for everybody. And grants, there may, may be other grants coming on, but that's where it is at the moment. And then this other section here. So we've got a few practical actions here. And uh, and again, this is the sort of things that we can let you know about if, we, if you call us or email us. And we've got some tips about, you know, different things you can do. But also we've got a bit of information about installers and, and more information. So this is what we really want to develop. And is it very early stages? So at the moment, we've just got links to the CSE Future Proof Scheme for um, assessors. Ian's going to talk a bit more about that later. That's to their website. And also to the MCS Register, which is kind of a, the main site for low carbon heating installers and information MPV. Um, and PV. And here it's just basically contact us. We've got a, a form there if you want to use that as well. Um, so the final thing I just wanted to say is um, that uh, uh, about, about where we are with energy efficiency at the moment in Baines. So hopefully you can see that. So that's our current kind of leaflet about um, promoting our grant scheme. But, those little houses there represent the numbers of houses in 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 Baines um, at those particular EPC ratings. So of A, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And you know what we want to do to try to achieve um, carbon zero is certainly get practically all our homes in Baines at least up to the C or better. And and you can see um, at the moment. <laughs> see again which um you know we've got the majority of our properties are in d so we want to move those up past c we've got a lot in e and f some in f and some in g so so we're going to we monitor those continuously and the idea is obviously to keep an eye on that and move the whole lot up towards a um and so we can work you know keep an eye on how we're doing so yeah that that is basically a single point of contact um, to try to give a bit of information to get you to the next stage and to signpost to other agencies that are um, involved in this area. Um, that's it from me, Tom. Chris, beautifully done. Eight minutes and eight seconds. Thank you for that. Oh. And that's a really, um, must be just seeing that final graphic about the EPC ratings of those properties that we have in our area that have had a rating is, um, I've just been scribbling the numbers down, really interesting. Um, thank you for that, Chris. Tom, are you happy to uh, follow in Chris's footsteps and go next? Yes, no, that's, that's no problem at all. Great. Um, I'm going to be speaking slightly less, uh, for slightly, a slightly less time than, than Chris and the other panellists, but um, I'm going to be speaking today about green energy tariffs. Um, now, for those of you are you happy for me to go straight in, Tom? Yeah, please do, Tom. Yeah, and are you, are you sharing a presentation? I'm not, no. No, far, great. Far away then. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about green energy tariffs and green energy, just to give a, a neat little definition at the start, is any renewable electricity that's generated any, sorry, any electricity that's generated through renewable sources. So this includes things like wind and solar power. Now, for now, I'm just going to emphasize this sort of renewable characteristic, but uh, things get a little bit different when it starts looking at green gas. Uh, green gas is a lot harder to produce. It's made through, uh, it's made through the sort of the breakdown of the, the break, breaking down of biodegradable material. And it's a lot harder to do. So if you look at most green energy tariffs or payment plans, um, most of them will offer to cover between 6 and 25% of your gas, uh, gas usage. Generally, it's about 10 um, from what I found, found online. Um, but I think, I think what's important to say is that when you have a green energy tariff, not all of the energy actually going into your house or the gas going into your house will be 100% green. 
what happens is uh, the it's not like someone can magically flick a switch and it suddenly changes provider. What happens is your provider will buy back the same amount of electricity or gas that you use and put it back into the gas and electricity grids. And what the, so the net effect is it's 100% renewable. Now, because gas is a lot harder to, to produce, green gas is a lot harder to produce, something that a lot of suppliers will offer is carbon offset gas. Now, what this means is they, they're offsetting what you use. So beyond just simply matching it in green gas that they can generate. Um, so what this means is invest in, investment in things like uh, forest conservation policies and uh, general sort of policies that can, that can sort of nullify the carbon emissions. So it's not exactly green, but uh, the, sorry, it's not exactly renewable, but the net result is that it's 100% green. Um, Having said this, I think there's there's a number of controversies going on with the and the green energy tariff sector at the moment, and it's it's worth just just bringing them to attention. So the biggest uh, of these controversies is something called greenwashing. Um, if you don't mind the sort of pun. Um, now there's all sorts of shades of green depending on what people people would like to to get from their energy provider. But one of the big controversies at the moment is that people are the suppliers are exaggerating the amount uh, the environmental impact of what they're actually providing. Now whenever a unit of electricity is renewable electricity is produced uh, at the same time something called a renewable energy guarantee of origin or rego certificate is also produced now the problem is that electricity that's generated renewable electricity that's generated and that certificate of of sort of authentication um, they don't have to be sold together so what this means and what we've got at the moment is an abundance of these rego certificates left over so a number of uh, suppliers are going to the open market they're sourcing electricity from uh, electricity that's produced through nuclear power and through fossil fuels and then they're buying these rego certificates as well so that and claiming that it's it's greener than it actually is now, linked to this controversy is the fact that because you're you're not necessarily buying things directly, uh, there's because the, the renewable energy isn't necessarily being produced directly from 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 what you're paying for. There's a lack of investment in the renewable sector. Um, now, this is all being investigated currently by a central last last producer reviewing the sector and looking looking into this. And, and at the same time, it announced that there's going to be a separate review of third party sectors. So price comparison websites and energy switching companies are also going to be looked at because they're not regulated at the moment. Um, and I think in, in to sort of wrap up, I, I looked at a number of housing, uh, sorry, a number of price comparison websites with those caveats in mind that I've just said. Um, but I think one thing that I want to stress is that green energy tariffs aren't necessarily that was the cheapest option. Um, some, I think the cheapest, I, I did find looking at sort of a standard price, uh, standard contract for a, a two, two bedroom property in Twerton, um, I did find that you can make savings of up to £117 a year switching to a green energy tariff. But at the same time, those costs of 100, you could go to sort of a maximum of £130 a year. What I will say is if you want 100% renewable energy and 100% renewable gas, there was only one provider I could find that actually offered that. Um, and I think it's always best to bear in mind the sort of caveats of the reviews that are going on at the moment. So what is always the best thing to do is just look at individual tariffs. It might sound stupid, but um, it's better safe than sorry. And I think sometimes the fact that someone's got green or something in their name that might indicate they're 100% they're renewable doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. And so it's about individual research. Um, some cases aren't necessarily uh, some some green energy tariffs don't necessarily offer warm home grants as well. Uh, sorry, warm home discounts as well, which can be up to 140 pounds for some of the most uh, uh, of of low income and deserving uh, people in that respect. And um, also, there's sort of an accessibility point that might be worth raising is that a lot of green energy tariffs are paperless. Um, now, I said earlier, there's sort of shades of green and depends of, in terms of what you're looking for and how much you're willing to pay and, and what, what you want as a consumer. Now, at the moment, I said that there's a lot less renewable gas out there and, and it's, it's generally less of a prominent feature in these green energy tariffs. And so I think if, if there was anything I wanted to say to look at is looking at prominent feature in these green energy tariffs and so I think if, if there was anything I wanted to say I think that's all I've got to say Tom. Tom 
Thanks. I'm so sorry. I think, was I the only one towards the end of your speech that unfortunately I think we just lost you slightly? Did, did, is that right? Tom, I sort of feel like that there was a bit where... Oh, okay. Can, can you hear me now? Because I just think you were going to finish it by just saying yes, no. that... Um, you, if there was one thing you could say, and then unfortunately in mine, that's, that's when you cut out of mine. So if you wanted to try again, let's see if we can just capture that last message before I move on to, to Ian. Of course. Um, I, think, I think to sort of just give a neat summary, at the moment there are 9 million homes in the UK on green energy tariffs. So it's, it's, a, it's a very important sector. Now I said there's, there's a lot less... Um, coverage in terms of green gas at the moment and there's less options available for consumers and there's shades of green we've I've talked about that as well but the one place i think if you could invest in and i think with these nine million households is to look at green green energy particularly and to, to invest in there and and use our consumer power to just encourage this renewable sector brilliant so that's tom take say, two tom. works Take two worked perfectly for me, and I think the others, I think it did as well for the others. So thank you for bearing with us there. Um, and thanks very much indeed for that. Um, Ian, I'm I'm gonna go that's to you next, time. if that's okay. Yeah, no problem. I will attempt the screen share. Uh, here we go. Hopefully you can see my screen. Although now I can't make this go. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Sorry. Let's try that again. Try again. Let me know, Ian, if you need me to. Yeah. Hopefully. Can that I looks change? good. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, great. I'm in. I'm in. Thank you. Sorry about that, people. Um, so, yeah, I'm here for the Centre for Sustainable Energy based in Bristol, but we work across the west of England and southwest to talk to you about Future Proof, which is a project uh, where we have been trying to make people's homes more energy efficient, and low carbon. Um, so the project was initially a pilot funded by Bayes as part of their um, uh, supply chain retrofit accelerator projects. Um, just a catchy title there. Um, the funding for that ran out at the start of the year, so now we're sort of uh, going it alone. Uh, so basically, um, we, when we started the project, we did a sort of brand development exercise to try and think about what it was that people in the West of England area uh, wanted and what it is we could offer. So this is the, the, the sort of vision and our ambition, which hasn't changed really. And that's to basically make it easier for people to make the right, you know, the low carbon retrofit uh, decisions, making it a natural choice. And the way we try to do that is to stimulate local demand and supply chains uh, through the West of England to make it easier for householders to do that. So I think as I'm um, listed on the first slide, the Green Register are a partner in Future Proof um, and they provide all of the training for local tradespeople uh, and skilled kind of um, people, builders and really that training focuses on giving people uh, knowledge of whole house retrofit building physics the right materials sustainability so construction in its round really so there's a there's another slide which is all of our sort of brand promise but the key thing really that future proof is about what we're trying to do is find householders who are really motivated to retrofit their homes, make them low carbon, and put them together with skilled builders, tradespeople who understand um, how to do the measures in the right way, because um, you can get, you know, it's like anything, if you want to do work on your home, it's always good to get a recommendation. If you know somebody who's had some work done by somebody else, that's who you're gonna try and get. You effectively want someone who you can trust to come do building work on your home. So that's what we're trying to do really as part of Future Proof is bring, bring those two things together. I think the latter in terms of engaging the supply chain has been the biggest challenge in the project and that's where we've still got lots of work to do. We need to get more builders uh, and tradespeople locally to come through and do the training uh, and pick up the baton. So Future Proof, there's a website of course which um, I'm, I'm sure I can share in the, in the chat afterwards. 
Um, as I said earlier, we've no longer got funding from Bayes, but we're now offering um, paid for services to householders. Uh, and you can find them on the website. So in terms of the sorts of support we offer, um, we can give householders uh, tailored advice and support by our initial telephone contact, but then we can go out and do home surveys, uh, something called a retrofit assessment. And we can also give some planning advice um, from a qualified planner to help people who've had issues with planning decisions. Um, the key thing that we're offering at the moment is something called a retrofit plan. Uh, which is very, um, I still think, quite an industry-specific term, but you know, maybe one day it will get better known by householders and, and you know, talks like this and how that's going to happen. So what your retrofit plan should do is, based on your assessment, uh, which is more than um, an energy performance certificate, so um, you know, Chris mentioned we need to get people up beyond C. Uh, to get to net zero, we need to move all those people up towards the A, and B category. Well, an EPC has an assessment, a survey. A RegFit assessment is quite similar. It collects some, some similar information, but it also looks at your ventilation needs, thinks about the occupancy, and critically, it looks at the condition of the property. Because um, what a lot of people often don't realise and don't like to hear sometimes, is if you're going to start improving your home, Sometimes you need to do a bit of building maintenance first to make sure that when you install those measures, uh, they've got a decent lifetime and they'll last properly. So you can't put insulation on the outside of your property if the wall's not in a great condition to begin with. So as an example, we can also offer quality assurance in terms of site visits after and during installation, um, you know, so that we can check the work that somebody's doing to make sure it's all right. Uh, and we also offer um, compliance services for something called PASS 2035, which is a, a standard that all um, energy efficiency measures now need to, to reach, which um, uh, if you try to access the Green Homes Grant, you know, you'd have had to find someone who's trust mark approved. That's all part of PASS 2035. So. Uh, what's a retrofit plan? I think I've vaguely covered that already, hopefully. So it's an assessment. It's more than an EPC. I think that's the important thing. You can get an EPC done for your home for I think between 60 and 80 pounds or something. The assessment under, underpins the plan and that gives you an idea of what you can do for your property um, over the next, it's called the medium term plan, which I think is 30 years. And it will give you some sequencing of when to do the measures. We've got qualified retrofit coordinators who would be able to go that through that with you. Uh, and we can identify issues such as planning. Um, Although we can't guarantee you'll get planning approval, I have to say, because that is obviously down to uh, each local authority and planning officer based on your, con you know, your position and submission. So very briefly, um, what's our kind of ethos in terms of retrofitting your home? Um, start off with behavioural changes, doing the, the simple things, saving energy, using energy wisely. Um, once you've looked at the property, and you know what you need to do, maintenance first, get the property in a fit state, then look at your draft, your ventilation, then your insulation, building up to heating and then renewables afterwards. Um, fabric first is what we like to say, um, because obviously if you insulate your property, treat the fabric first, you will have a lower heat demand, so you'll need a smaller heating unit, but also if you switch to something like a heat pump, um, they will only work efficiently if your property is well insulated. If it's not well insulated, um, it's likely to work harder, which will reduce its coefficient of performance, as they say. Uh, and then your bills you know, could end up going up, which is not what we want to see, because then people won't be very happy about the fact that they've tried to retrofit their home and do the right thing. Uh, so I'm probably slightly under eight minutes, seven minutes or something, but um, that is me. Ian, that is brilliant. Thank you. And uh, only just under your eight minutes, but that was really, um, that was excellent. Thank you very much indeed for, um, for that. And no problem. Emma, I'm going to pass to you now. That's okay. Are you, Emma, are you, are you, are you sharing slides? We, no, we uh, Michaela's going to be sharing the, the slide pack for me. I live in a quite dodgy internet area, just in case um, things go pear-shaped. You'll all be fine and can carry on the presentation without me. 
Michaela, would you, would you be able to share the slides? Just one moment and I shall bring them up. Thank you. <laughs> oh dear, sorry about this. So, I've just lost your slides. Here we are. Well done, there they are. Yeah, thank you. Are we good to go? Emma, yeah, I think so. And um, we can't make them any bigger. Just, just because there's a, a, quite a bit of text on some of them. Sorry. Um, let's see. Oh, Ooh. sorry about Ooh. this. this. I think you, 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 you might, you might find it. Yeah, okay. Is that as good as we're, I was going to say, if you go back to that percentage thing, I think if you go down to the bottom, does that give you a... Oh dear, sorry about this, folks. It's... Right, I'm going to try and share my screen again. I'm going to stop sharing. Emma, to reassure you, yes, this, is not, okay. this is not in your eight minutes, although yeah. it is part of our countdown to 2030. It's so, fine. Um, it's fine. Uh, my presentation won't take eight minutes, and it's been really interesting to hear um, Ian, Chris, and Tom talk through the other areas. And I think yeah. hopefully what we'll find when we we get to my slide pack is that it complements uh, the topics that have already been covered. Um, but I think um, if I just give a summary, um, Lendology has been operating uh, in the southwest since around about two thousand and three, and we've been here to support. Um, the delivery of home improvement loans on behalf of the local councils. And we work with Bath and North East Somerset for a number of years on these sorts of measures. And it's really interesting when you talk about um, looking at climate emergency and sort of the, the phrase retrofit, and um, what does that mean? Well, to me, a retrofit can be anything from, as Ian said, it could be the insulation in your roof, it could be your windows, it could be your doors, all of those things that really help keep all the energy in that you, you're using to keep your property warm. Um, so we've been doing sort of retrofitting measures now for over 15 years on behalf of Bath and North East Somerset. And what we're, we're here to do is to be that sort of uh, place where um, we provide the opportunity for you to be able to um, have a loan to help pay for some of these measures. That will do, I think, um, let's, Sorry yeah. about this, Emma. Yeah, it's, um... So, let's, so um, if, if we just look at this quick slide, we work on behalf of a number of other councils across the, the West Country, including the likes of Dorset, Wiltshire, South Somerset, uh, and all across Devon. Um, if we move on to the next slide. Our, our, um, again, we're really here as a social enterprise. We're a non-profit making organisation that works with the councils. We're not here to see how many loans we can do each year or to generate a vast profit. We're actually here to make a difference uh, to the people that we support. So we're looking to provide all of our homeowners that we work with the peace of mind of knowing that the loan that they've got with us is the right loan for them. One of the great things about us is that we can refer you back into the council if we're unable to support you. We know about the measures that um, the grant measures that are available from each council partner as well. So rather than just uh, trying to, to supply you with a loan, we actually try and find you the free money first. So if we move on to the next slide, please, Michaela. So as I've said, as uh, we operate an, a variety of schemes across the piece, and uh, if your home happens to be a park home, then we're able to make those more energy efficient. If you're a landlord and you have a series of properties, we're able to support you to take those measures to support the means areas and those sort of minimum energy standards. Uh, we look at empty properties, my goodness me, they're generating a huge amount of um, energy usage by not being used. We should be using them so we can help you there. And as I've said, we look at those elements where we can look for windows, doors, and all of those fabric first measures that truly do need doing. Thank you, if we could move on. 
So we fund all these sorts of things um, and any other works approved by your local council. And I think you're extraordinarily lucky in, in Bath and North East Somerset that you have a progressive council that is really challenging and really making the difference with climate emergency measures and are very keen to develop and support everybody who wants to make a difference to the climate, climate measures within their own homes. So if we move on to the next slide. So going down to the boring bits about how the loan's structured, I thought it'd be worthwhile just giving you a, an overview of how, how it all works. Um, every person who has a loan with Lendology has one fixed rate and it's 4%. So that's regardless of your age, your income, uh, any of those other things that other credit ratings uh, kind of sling on you. They might say it, the typical APR is uh, 6% or 2%, but when you come to actually take out the loan, invariably it's a lot higher. We have no uh, setup fees, uh, we have no early repayment fees, and sort of the minimum loans that we offer at the moment start from £1,000 and they go up to £15,000 or more, depending on the measures that you're trying to deliver. And the, the, the great thing about um, us, I would say that would night, is the people. We don't actually use credit ratings, we use people to enable us to um, make sure that whatever money you do want to borrow is affordable. We make sure everybody can afford to pay back the amount they say they're going to pay back. Um, and again, when you look at other sorts of loans available on the market, not many offer you sort of the ability to be able to make any lump sum reductions at any time. And again, we're able to provide that service because we want you to pay the money back as soon as possible so that we can lend it to somebody else. So if we move on to the next slide. The um, wonder that is the different loan products. So um, capital repayment is you're paying back the capital and the interest. For some people, we are able to offer a loan where you only pay back the interest and then you pay back the capital when you, pay, uh, when you ultimately sell the property. For some, we, um, some clients, they don't actually pay more than sort of once a year and they pay the interest each year. And again, for some people, such as landlords who are trying to make some you know, really big measures with uh, rental properties, we have something called a deferred capital repayment uh, loan, sorry. Uh, and that means that the, the landlord potentially wouldn't have to start paying back uh, any part of the loan and still they start, until they start generating an income and we can defer those payments. So moving on to the next slide, I thought it would be interesting to just share with you some of the impact that the loans make that uh, Baines offer. And this is across our whole region. Um, but what we've done over the last 12 months, even in the pandemic, was we lent over £1.6 million worth of council funds. Uh, and as you can see there, 73% of borrowers reported that their home improvements improved the energy efficiency of their home. So even before COP26 and even before these things were happening, we were making an impact by helping people um, replace those old windows and just make their homes more safe and secure. Uh, we have a... a Larger proportion of our borrowers are aged over 60, but um, we can lend to anyone over 18. And again, it's something that we don't often think about, but having uh, lower bills, having safer windows, having no damp seems to make people far more healthy and far happier to be in their own homes. And it's something that we tend to forget. Uh, and we're really delighted that 91% of our clients are feeling far, far healthier and happier. And um, we also support those people who potentially might be excluded from ordinary loans. So those people on really fixed incomes or on benefits who happen to have a poor credit rating doesn't necessarily mean we're going to say no. We look at everybody and we really look to try and lend if we can. And as I said at the start of the presentation, if we can't lend, then we'll refer back into the council where we try and support you in other ways. So on to the next slide. This is just some of the feedback that we, we've had from our clients, and I'm sure these slides will be made available uh, at, at, available for people to read. Um, and if you, um, I think they're also might be available on our website if you want to see some of the client testimonials that we have. Um, because taking out a loan isn't something that any of us wake up every morning going, yes, I want to take out a loan. But if you can just see the difference that it will make to your property, to the environment, and to your health and well-being, I think a loan is the least option, it's the least worst option. So I think I'm on to the penultimate slide. Have a look, what, what have we got, Michaela? Caught you on the hop there. So why choose us? Well, I, I, we work really closely with the council. 
we offer that tailored support throughout the whole process. And during the pandemic, what we were able to do was to provide people with opportunities to talk to us about difficulties they might be having. So we don't just send out letters saying, why can't you afford to pay stuff? We look at getting in touch, trying to help work out better options for you. And we are incredibly flexible. Um, and I think if with a 99% client recommending us, then they, we've got to be doing something right. And then I think I'm on the final slide. That's it. I don't think I took eight minutes, Tom, but tell me if I did. Emma, that was brilliant. Uh, it was uh, the time flew by. We were on our eight minutes, but that was really good. Thank you very much indeed. For that And everyone, thank you to uh, Emma, Ian, Tom and Chris. Um, they, that was, we promised you at the start of this, information on what you could do, how to pay for it, where to find the people to do it, and information on selecting green energy tariffs. And, and we've, we've had it all in the last 40 minutes. Um, uh, it, there's a chance now to have a bit of time for questions and answers. And um, if anyone has any questions, please do pop them in the um, Q&A box. I just want to check because Ian, Ian had incredibly fast typing fingers in response to some of the questions we had during the uh, during uh, during the presentations. Can I just check? Can can people, McKenna, maybe you can answer this. Can people see the questions that Ian has then responded to as well in the in the chat? Yeah, Tom, it might be worth because um, there are some questions and answers there. I don't know. It might be worth reading out the questions well that's that's exactly um, what and I seeing whether about. ian is happy to just talk through them as well maybe ian ian i'm going to test you on what you wrote just a few minutes ago. <laughs> no it's okay yeah. and but also obviously there's opportunity for for, for others if they, if they have anything to to add in particular but the first one which um ends with one of your answers being about the q bot which i, I myself have also seen some information on the first question is about is it worth insulating under my floor? It seems really disruptive, but um, but I think I get drafts from the floor and not sure if I should consider addressing the floor insulation. Um, Ian, do you want yeah. to reflect on your response? Yeah, sure. I guess um, uh, I, I gave, probably gave quite an obvious response, really, in that it depends a bit on your floor and, and the access you have and you know what your flooring is at the moment so you know if if, if taking up your floor is going to you know damage something that you spent a lot of money on you're less likely to do it you know if you've got good access then it might actually be you know relatively cheap to insulate your floor uh cubot i think it's about 1500 pounds i'm not off the top of my head chris might know in terms of the cost of a cubot doing a doing a property so you know it's not cheap cheap but actually it can get into smaller spaces and you you obviously can get get the robot in and then off it goes and does its thing a bit like one of these robots that mows your lawn um you know it goes around underneath your home it's got like tread wheels so it can go over rubble that will obviously reduce the amount of disruption uh, basically um, so yeah it is worth doing but it depends on your floor Ian, to, to move away just from the floors as well in the building, was it your slide pack that had that useful picture of a house and where energy is and heat is typically lost? 25% through the roof or... Uh, no, I can't remember if it was. 25% through the happened. walls, yeah. And Yeah, okay. Because uh, I thought that was quite a helpful uh, aid memoir, sort of the, the percentage quantum you get from different aspects of a, of, of, of a, of a property. Um, Emma... Chris or Tom, any further reflections on on floor insulation or wider topics there are? Yeah, um, no? Just um, yeah, just on the floor insulation, you know, agree with Ian. There's quite a lot of people do have it done. You know, they actually lift up their panel, their floorboards as well, and lay the kind of matting underneath, and then put the floorboards back down again. Um, but yeah, I think you're, Ian's right. I mean, it, there are some people that will do it, and then they'll you know take your floorboards up and 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 just put down chipboard or something so you have got to be make sure you know exactly how it's going to be done first um and think about it very carefully but yeah, it's a great measure yeah cuba i'll find out what the costs are and i'll put them on our website i'll put a range of costs on the website 
Thanks, Chris. Um, thank you, Ian. The next one is actually a question I was going to ask, or, or similar to one I was going to ask, which is about EPC ratings. Um, Chris, you know you finished your presentation with the uh, the split of EPC ratings across the, 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 the properties in Bath and North East Somerset. Um, Jill's reflected that in this question that there's a lot of homes in D. How do I know what my EPC rating is? Um, and I was also just going to widen that. And Chris, I'm hoping you might be able to respond to this, or maybe Ian will. Um, uh, also, th there are only certain circumstances where you're sort of forced to have an EPC. And I'd be interested to know, I can't remember what our total housing stock is. So I don't know if what the rate, it, how many houses we actually got EPC ratings mm. for as a percentage of our stock. So maybe I'll start and then Ian, probably good to come in. Um, but yeah. Um, We've got um, we've got around about you know just under eighty thousand um, different separate homes, individual homes, um, and uh, and we've got about sixty thousand EPCs registered yeah. on the national register. So there's still quite a lot of um, homes that haven't got an EPC. They probably haven't needed them because you know the person who you know you haven't they haven't moved or you know there hasn't there isn't a requirement to have an EPC unless you're selling your home or ne or renting your home. But, um, but yeah, it's a really useful tool to get started with either dig out your EPC, you can look it up, you can look it up on the government website, .gov.uk, you can, you can look up your own EPC and see what it is if you've lost it, and you can see what it says, and it's a really good starting point to see what you think you need to do next. Um, I mean, Ian, maybe you fancy saying something about getting one done. Yeah, I mean, I think I just agree with what you said there, really, Chris. I mean, um, it's a good starting point. Um, there's lots of domestic energy assessors out there. So, you know, you can you can find someone fairly easily um, just, you know, via Google. Other search engines are available. Um, <laughs> estate agents, obviously, if you're listing your property, um, you'll, you'll need to get an EPC uh, done. So, yeah, it's definitely a good, good starting point. Um, but if you, you know, if you then want to take action, you can go deeper into it, you know, with with a, you know, a survey or something to get yourself a plan. But it's definitely a good start. Right. Now, the only thing I just add quickly is if you're renting or you're a landlord renting, then there is a minimum energy efficiency standard. At the moment, it's it's an E, which is quite low, but it'll very soon, next few years, it'll it's due to move up to a C rating. So it's it's really worth um, paying attention to your EPC if you're renting or if you if you to someone else or if you're renting your home. Emma, sorry, um, not to put you on the spot, but but when you're looking at lendology and, and loans being given to, um, to 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 individuals, do you do you make reference to EPC ratings and uh, and any? desired outcome for the EPC rating to be approved or is that is that not necessarily a particular criteria you would be using for the loans? Good question. No, no, we're, we're genuinely interested in the person's home becoming the home they want it to be rather than any of that uh, the prescriptive areas. So what we look to do is providing it's, it's uh, the works that the individual is looking to do on their property are covered by the council's housing policy. And as I said earlier, Bath and North East Somerset are very progressive in, in that they will lend money for the majority of measures. Um, then we, 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 we let people borrow the money for whatever the measures they want to do. So, yeah. Thanks. Um, and then the final question we had before or, or whilst, um, whilst you were all speaking, was about the what happened to the Green Homes Grant. It came and went. And uh, <laughs> I'll, leave you to, I'll leave you to read out your answer. And I, I, and I don't know, uh, Emma, it might be interesting to touch upon whether you find that people who approach you for Lendology offerings have often also received some form of grant to support some of their work or, 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 or not. But Ian, do you, want to, do you want to just pick up on that point again? Well, it's, uh, yeah, an, an unmitigated disaster, really. I, I mean, I feel for the for Bayes uh, as a government department because, 
it was really a treasury decision which was um, thrust upon them with very short notice. So one might argue that actually they, they, they did quite well in the end, even though it was a, a, a terrible disaster. I mean, the problem is government don't understand that um, building a supply chain for retrofit takes years and you need to give people confidence uh, that they like, you know, if I'm a company, I'm a builder, I'm an installer, if I'm going to invest in something. I need to know that the thing I'm investing in is going to be here in three or four years, five years time, not 12 months time. That's just not long enough. So it was all just a shambles, really. I mean, I, I can't really say much more than that other than absolute disaster. I think from COP26 and, you know, what we need to see in the future is timescales of five years. But, for, 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 you know, if they just said we've got the Green Homes Grant and we're going to, it's a five-year programme, we're going to ramp up to two billion a year. We're going to start with a small amount, and you know that would have been perhaps the way forward. But um, I think I'd agree, Ian. We we had a lot of inquiries when the Green Homes Grant was was sort of promoted, and we received probably thirty or forty inquiries over the course of about two or three weeks, and we were trying to inform uh, clients, you know, what was involved, what they needed to do, and. I think ultimately we helped one person. That was all we were able to help because that was the only one person who was either eligible or could find the contractors or could get a start date or, you know, could jump through all of the hoops and do everything that they needed to do. We helped one person with a top up. Uh, I think the measures they wanted to do were going to cost around about 7,000 and they got the grant for five. Uh, we lent them the 2,000 pound difference, but it was so sad to have all of that energy just dissipated over the course of mm. the space for a couple of months as the as the scheme just morphed into something that was just so unachievable. It was such a shame. I mean, many of the, you know, many of the measures that, you know, people need to do are going to cost more than £5,000 anyway. So, you know, if you've got some resources, then it, it is worth, you know, looking at it under your own steam uh, and not waiting around for a grant. There are, I think, Chris, when he showed the Energy at Home website earlier, had um, uh, City Energy were listed as part of the, the local authority demonstration scheme, the LAD scheme, which is still running. That is actually Green Homes grant money so from the same funding pot. So that's currently uh, available in, in, in the West of England area. And there are there are there is some funding and hopefully we'll see some more funding next year through LADs and something else called HUGS. So. There's a good direction to travel in terms of funding with, with fairly stupid acronyms. Um, and so if you're on a lower income, um, potentially there are grants out there, um, you know, and there's organisations like ourselves and Energy at Home and Lendology who will be there to try and help support people through the process in a more reasonable time scale. But yeah, unfortunately, the Green Homes Grant was not, not, a, not a great st news story. Oh, well, thank you both. Chris, do you want, uh, Chris or Tom, have you got anything that you want to add to, to that reflection? Um, I don't know, Tom, uh, you go in a minute, but I was just going to say, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what Ian thinks. So there, there was that um, Simple Energy Advice website that became available, um, which we were signposting people to that phoned up Energy at Home, which was quite a comprehensive sort of interactive web tool. Um, that, that seemed quite useful um, and also contained a list of contractors. So some of it seemed to be on the, on the, on the right lines. But yeah, I think we've all, all suffered, including our schemes, with the issue of the supply chain um, not being developed and the short time scales. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Tom, would you like to add anything to, to that? I think the only thing I'd add uh, really is to just encourage people to go to the Energy at Home website. Um, there's the link to City Energy's current lad, um, City Energy's current, uh, they're, they're currently administering the, the lad scheme for the West of England Combined Authority, and I'd, I'd encourage you to the end of a look at that. Brilliant, thank you. Um, our time has flown by, but I'm going to let everyone have a final 20 second response. Ian, Ian, you, you to this sorry, 20 second response to a final question. Ian, you 
touched upon COP26 and we're in the run up to the COP26 climate talks. Um, and I guess my parting question would be, what would you like to see from the government at these talks relating to the topics that we've discussed tonight? Um, I'll be, let's do a reverse order from the original speaking order. Emma, are you happy to yeah. give us a quick pitch? Thank you, Tom. I think for me, uh, it is that, that long-term strategic goal that we're aiming for, as Ian's already highlighted, the, the, the challenges we had with the Green Homes Grant. I want a long-term strategy that's a 10, 20-year strategy for, for the measures that we need to put in place. That would be my request. Thank you, Emma. Ian, what are your thoughts to that question? Uh, well, Emma's sort of, uh, she's stolen my thunder there. But <laughs> yes. um, it's, for government, it's about seeing the investment in retrofit as, um, uh, as more than kind of just these piecemeal schemes. And it's about, um, it's about our sort of um, assets, as it were. I've forgotten the, the exact word I'm looking for. So government will invest in roads, for example because it, it's um, it's kind of an asset for the country. It sees it as a, you know, as, as infrastructure. a thing. Infrastructure, thank you, Chris. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So it needs to view retrofit and people's homes as infrastructure and jobs. Uh, and I think that's where, where we can win the argument with Treasury when you start talking about jobs. Um, and we don't tend to do that. We tend to talk about carbon and energy rather than, than jobs. And so I think that's the main thing. Thank you. Tom, what are your thoughts? I think uh, it'd be interesting to see how the international response develops, particularly in terms of energy purchasing, um, in terms of gas in relation to the current crisis as well, and looking at how, uh, if any, any joint approaches can be taken in that respect to look at uh, perhaps a more sustainable future towards gas prices and energy prices. Thank you. And last, but by no means least, Chris. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a lot's been covered, but yeah, I mean, I, it's a bit of a follow-on from Tom's point, um, Tom Hugo's point, really. It's just um, electricity, you know, I mean, it, it make it something which is much more um, affordable and comparable with the price of fossil fuel, you know, like gas. If the price of electricity could come down or the price of gas or... or or the price of gas go up. Um, it's got to be something that we don't want to make people feel poor, but I'd like to see um, the price of electricity not put people off um, using that as a as for heat pumps or for um, electric heating. Okay. Thank you. And almost exactly an hour after we started, I'm going to finish just by saying thank you once again to Emma, Ian, Tom and Chris, and also to you all for... Uh, for joining uh, and for Michaela to, for helping. And don't forget, if there's any of these sessions from the festival that you want to catch up on, they're on the YouTube clip and there's still several more sessions to come later this week. Um, but at that, we'll leave and close this webinar and thank you all and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, everyone. Thank